Hey everybody, Jennifer from Scrapping Under the Influence. I am back with a new tutorial and I'm sure you're going, there's, where's the paper? <laughs> so I'm doing it a little bit differently this time. It is going to be just the tutorial of the base itself. It is not decorated um, because I'm not sure what paper I'm using on this yet. Um, but I had this done. I wanted to go ahead and share it. So here we are. Um, I did use the um, Winter Gray Artisan Cardstock for this, which is a color that's been, she's had for a couple of years, and I don't know, I don't see it used a whole lot, so I thought I would use this one because it's beautiful. It goes with pretty much everything that black will go with. Looks great on this as well, so just something to keep in mind. So this is a folio. It is eight and a half by ten and a half with a one and a half inch spine and you may have seen a decorated version of this already because I actually did my original one of this with the um, Doodlebug Farmer's Market. So I had shared that, um, I guess it's been about a month ago, but I've been kind of out of commission with Carpal Tunnel and hadn't done much of anything the last couple of weeks except color. <laughs> so um, I went ahead and did a full tutorial on the assembly of this. So when you open it up, you've got... Um, your flaps on your left and your right mirror each other. I don't have closures or anything yet because I'm not sure if I'm going to use ribbon or magnets or what I'm going to do. So there are no closures. So this will, if nothing else, this will kind of give you an idea of the project without being distracted by the paper. Because I know, you know, all of us kind of have a tendency to see something that one of the design team does and want to do it in exactly that same paper and you don't necessarily always think oh I could do this but with this instead so that was kind of my other thinking behind doing it this way once I do get this matted of course I'll share a walkthrough of it with matting but that's kind of my thinking on this so the side flips up of course because of the size you've got room for you know bigger pictures um, this flips down and we've got some more little flaps that kind of come out and up. Again, um, I did change this a little bit from my original one. Um, it had a slider on here, which I did end up taking off. I think what I'm going to do instead is um, most likely do a ribbon closure on this just because of where it is. The slider was cute, but it doesn't, it's not like the best functionality. Um, we've got just a big flap here, and I do have two little like um, photo mat flips that will go on this once it's matted but at this point they are just off to my side here. Uh, this flap we've got two pockets that are not glued down so that I can mat underneath them um, before I do so. Back of that is just blank. We've got a nice big belly band with a small belly band on top running the opposite direction and then this little flip out um, again, I think I'm going to do a ribbon closure on this instead of a magnetic one, but because I'm not sure, I didn't want to glue this down just yet. So you could go either way on that one. So this all folds up like so. The opposite side, you flip this up. This bottom flap on this side is smaller and does not have anything else on it. We've got stacked pockets here. Nice big spot for a picture there and there. I have a nice accordion pocket here with a closure. Um, I think my original, I had a, another belly band in here and I ended up leaving it off because I'm not really sure that I want to do that again. So you could add a belly band, you could add some more flaps, you could, you know, kind of do whatever you wanted to in this section. I did, however, still do my push waterfall. So this is actually sitting on a pocket and then depending on what kind of um, the way I decorated this, this of course, oh, apparently it was stuck too, because of course it was. It's apparently stuck in more than one place. Oh my gosh, seriously, I was like crazy with the glue yesterday, apparently. Okay, so this of course, you know, just flips over like so. So it is the nice little um, push waterfall. And something is caught down here, and I'm not sure what. Okay, I will fix that in a minute. 
Um, but yeah, so that's it. The full tutorial will play next. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Let's get going. Okay, so we are going to start with our chipboard. So you're going to need two pieces that are eight and a half by ten and a half. You're going to cover the back of those with tape. Your cardstock to wrap these is going to be ten and a half by twelve. So it is going to be slightly short on um, the ends, but that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down. backing off of my tape. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball about where that needs to go because it's going to be three quarters of an inch on each end instead of one inch. I'm going to do the same thing with the next one. And get the backing off of my tape. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball again where that needs to go. And then for our spine, you need a piece that is ten and a half by one and a half. So the cardstock to wrap this is going to be four and a half by um, twelve again. And again, it is covered on the back with tape. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball about where needs to go down. Okay. Go ahead and put my spacers away. Put the scoreboard away for a minute. And we are going to wrap some chipboard. So we're going to start with the spine. You're going to go ahead and fold that over. Burnish it down. Get on the other end. And then we're going to do the long sides. Okay, and then we're going to miter. So I'm going to leave that folded in and I'm going to go from that corner out and again I know it's hard to see on camera but you'll be able to see where you folded that and that's where you're going to start okay and we're going to fold that in and miter again So this one, I am going to take my score tape and I'm going to get my ends. Unclog this. I haven't been doing much album wise the last couple of weeks because of my what we think is most likely carpal tunnel, but I'm not honestly sure I'm going to try and get it. <coughs> 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 
<coughs> excuse me, mm, get in to have it checked, but it has been painful enough. I have not been able to, even with the easy wrap method, wrap chipboard because it just hurt. <laughs> okay, so we've got those ends wrapped. I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to burnish along the edge of the chipboard so you can see now where there's, you know, a fairly distinct line when that paper gets pushed down over. Okay. And then I'm going to take my score tape and I'm going to go right along this edge. Okay, I'm going to set that one aside. So on our other two pieces, we are going to fold these just like we did with the spine and miter exactly like we did with the spine. We're going to do the exact same thing with this one, but I'm only going to show you one of the two on camera because it is the exact same process. So I'm going to go ahead and do my score tape all the way around. And then I'm going to start, and again, this part right here is just prefer personal preference. I like to start on the short ends, the short side that is. Get some glue in there, and then over and down. And that is where my wrist really hurts. <laughs> do the exact same thing to that piece and I'll be right back. Okay, so <clears throat> I've got both my cover pieces. Turn those pretty side up. I grab my glue, pull the backing off of my tape, and I'm going to just run some glue. in there like so. I'm going to start out on top of my spine and then come over and down. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to burnish. 
then I have my reinforcement piece. So this is six by 10 and 3 eighths. The entire back is covered with tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off. Backing off that is. And then I've got just a tiny bit hanging off this edge that I need to get. Cause you don't want it hanging off the edge. Okay. So I'm gonna just center this up. And lay that down. And then I'm gonna fold up. And I'm gonna burnish. Fold up. and just kind of get this settled in where I want it. And there is our cover. All right, let me move this to the side. I'm gonna grab our right side pieces. So our first piece is going to be a flap that folds up. It is eight and a quarter by ten, with the ten inch at the top of the scoreboard. And because my hand is killing me, we're going to try this left-handed. We'll see how I do. <laughs> okay, we're going to score it half an inch and one inch. Okay, set that aside. Bottom flap is going to be eight and a quarter by five and a half. With the five and a half at the top of the scoreboard, we're going to do half an inch. And one inch. Okay. This is going to be a side flap. This is five and one eighth, five and one eighth by ten and a quarter. We are going to score this at half an inch. And seven eighths of an inch. Okay. We have two little flaps. That are going to be just four by eight kind of flips. These are four by four once it's folded. So these are four by eight. You need two of them. I'm going to score both of them at four inches. Ooh, that hurts. Okay. Let's set those aside. Our next flap is going to be six and one eighth by eight and a half. We're going to score this at half an inch. And three quarters of an inch. That flap will have a couple of small pockets that sit on top of it. So you need two pieces five and three eighths by three and three quarters. Because this is a pocket, we are going to score this at half an inch on three sides. So two short sides, one long side. Okay. Alright, so then we have a belly band. This is 11 and a quarter by four and a half. With the 11 and a quarter at the top, you're going to score it half an inch on each end. Okay, 
on top of that will be a smaller belly band. <laughs> so this is five and a half by four. So with the five and a half at the top of the scoreboard, you're gonna score at half an inch. And half an inch. And then I've got just a little kind of flip thing that sits on top of the small belly band on top of the big belly band. <laughs> Cause I haven't done that for a while. So this is four and a half by 10 and a half. So we are gonna go, I remember how I did this for sure. Okay, we're gonna go three and a quarter. and seven and a quarter. So then this will fold up like so and will sit on top of that belly band, okay? All right, and then I've got, oh, these are flaps that go on another flap. I'm so confusing. So these are four and a half by nine. So with four and a half at the top, we're gonna score at half an inch. We're then gonna turn it and score at four and a half. Okay. And you're gonna do that on both of those. could put this stack on either side it really doesn't matter um, I am gonna go ahead and continue keep it on the right hand side like the original folio was so um, first up I'm gonna take my top flap I'm gonna miter and then I'm going to fold that half inch score line and burnish So if it's going to be on the right hand side when the book opens, I'm going to start upside down so I can get this lined up right. I'm going to get glue on my tab and then I'm just going to put this all the way at the very top and then just center it on that panel. Okay, so you're going to have about an eighth of an inch on either side. Okay, I'm going to turn it this way. We're going to take our bottom flap. Again, I'm going to miter. I'm going to fold and burnish just that half inch and go ahead and glue this one down as well. Actually, no, I'm not. Not yet. Okay, so let's find those last two pieces we scored, so the four and a half by nine. Okay, what we're gonna do is these are both gonna go on here, okay? So one on each side. However, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, and I would do them one at a time, okay? So when this is flipped down, this is gonna be over here on my left hand side. So I'm going to miter here, and then I'm going to miter over here, and then this whole tab, okay, we're going to cut right along that score line and cut that off. Then I can go ahead and fold this over and burnish it down. Oops, let's not catch that. Okay. In fact, we need it to go actually, I think, slightly inside that score line. 
honestly. Or, actually, you know what? No, let's just go ahead and fold that back. Rather than run the risk of cutting that wrong, I'm just going to fold that back. Okay. And so again, you're going to center this between your second score line, because we've got this half inch gusset on here, and the bottom. And it should, actually it should fit top to bottom fairly evenly. Um, for some reason I'm slightly off on this one, which I'm not real surprised. Okay, so then I'm going to do the same thing on this other one. I'm going to miter. And I'm going to fold and burnish. I just did that completely backwards. <laughs> just like I figured I would do. But it's okay because we haven't glued anything down yet. And just flip it back the other direction and then go ahead and glue it down. Okay. Now, if you wanted to put, and what I should have done was put a little ribbon closure here, and I didn't do that, but it will actually be just fine. That's going to fold in like so, and there we go. So now this one, we can go ahead and glue in on the bottom. We're going to center it up with that flap up above and then just go ahead and glue that down. Okay? All right, so this one, now that it's in where it's supposed to be, we can go ahead and fold our second score line and burnish it. So now we've got both of our gussets. Okay? Right. Okay, so I'm going to fold that back out of the way for a minute. So this flap, we're going to go ahead and miter. And I'm going to fold and burnish just that first score line. This one, we're just going to center up on this outside edge. And burnish that down. And then we can fold this back. And then there's our next one. Okay, so these two little 4 by 8 pieces, they're just going to get folded in half and burnished. Okay. After you mat this, you can put one on here and you can put one on the back side or you can put it on the back side of the other flap. So I'm just going to set these aside for now because I'm not matting this at this point, so I'm not going to do anything with those. Okay. Next flap. Again, we're going to miter. Miter. However, I am going to fold this up and kind of out of the way for a minute because this one is going to have two little pockets that sit on top of it. So these are the two five and three eighths by three and three quarters. I've got them stacked together with the scoring lined up. And I'm just going to miter the top edges. And then I'm going to cut through the bottom with score lines intersect straight across. Okay. So I'm going to fold and burnish. And clearly, I measured these totally wrong because that is absolutely incorrect. 
Okay, we'll come back to the pockets. Um, in fact, we're going to come back to the, the point where we put them in after this is already in. Okay. So. This one is just going to go centered up on this side. I just want to make sure that we didn't go too far in where we're running in to the spine of her book. Okay. Once you have that one down, then you can fold the gusset line. Okay. We have our belly band. So we're going to miter. we actually glue anything I'm just gonna lay this in here and make sure it's gonna fit the way I want it to which is fine um, honestly it could have been just a hair longer because I've got a little bit more of that showing top and bottom than I would have preferred um, yeah because I cut it wrong <laughs> of course I did okay so we're going to fix that in the pockets and I'll be right back. Okay. So these should have been six and three eighths by, and they're still too big. Okay. Clearly I cannot do this today. Um, I have a small camera handy. That. What did I cut them at? Six and a half? Probably. Okay, six and three eighths, not six and a half like I cut them here just a minute ago because clearly this is not my day to do this. Fix my scoring. and three eighths by three and three quarters. Then we will go ahead and miter. So I had done um, pockets stacked originally, but I think this time I'm going to do one front and one back. Or I could go ahead and still do them that way. And then I can mat differently top and bottom, which I think is what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is just glue that bottom tab. And 
and I'm going to leave this loose so that I can mat and then put that down, which just because it's a little bit shorter than I would have preferred, which I'm sure was just me doing this wrong, like always, because this is, you know, what happens. All right, belly band should be 11 and a half and 11 and a quarter. So, miter, and then fold and burnish. And then we will go ahead and make sure it fits inside where we want it, and it does. So, I can eyeball where that needs to go. So then the small belly band goes on top. So again, I'm just going to miter. And then fold and burnish. And that is going to sit directly on top of there. Again, I'm just going to center this up as close as I can get. I'm never exact, and that's fine. That one I can go ahead and take my sticky off of. And then our piece for the top is just going to fold up like so, and it's going to sit literally right on top of that. So, I'm not going to glue this because I am going to use ribbon on this to hold it closed and I'm not sure yet what color I want so I'm actually going to just tuck that in there for now which really you could just do that with it. Okay so then this will close up like so and one side is done. Let me kind of reset here and I'll be back with our other side. Okay, so let's do our other side. So again, we're going to have another big flap that's going to fold up. So this is eight and a quarter by ten and a quarter. With the ten and a quarter at the top, we're going to score this at half an inch. And at one and a quarter. So this is going to have a three quarter inch gusset. The little bottom flap is going to be eight and a quarter by four. We're going to score this one the exact same way. Yeah, my hand's killing me, sorry. So half inch and one and a quarter. Okay. Next flap is going to be nine and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So with the nine and a quarter at the top, we're gonna score this at half an inch and at one inch. Okay. That has three pockets that sit on it. These are all three and a half by nine and a quarter. So we're gonna score these at half an inch on two sides because we are going to do, I think, let me look at my actual original project, hold on. Okay. Yes, we're just gonna do it on the ends, okay? Which really, No, we are we are gonna go ahead and score it on the bottom as well. All right. 
our next is going to be okay then we have a large pocket this is nine and a quarter by seven and a half so we're going to score this with starting at the nine and a quarter side half an inch turn half an inch turn and half an inch and then we are going to do a push waterfall so and this is going to sit on top of that big pocket we just did so our base is nine and a quarter by seven okay with the nine and a quarter at the top of the scoreboard i'm going to score it half an inch turn it around half an inch again okay i have seven pieces of five by seven don't need any scoring and then the main part of our mechanism so this is seven by eight and a half we're going to start at five inches five and a half six six and a half seven seven and a half if i can score a straight line that would be incredibly and then eight yes okay so let's actually start with that so we've got our pieces with all of our little half inch score lines I'll miter this at the end and i'm going to fold and burnish again and again and again and again and again and one more time our base piece. And a miter. Miter, miter. Okay. We're going to glue this down at this end. Okay. All right. Okay, so I knew I wasn't totally crazy. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to just lay this underneath here in the back and then it doesn't have to be like super precise like you could score this if you wanted to but I'm not going to I'm gonna kind of get this down at the bottom and I'm gonna fold it up and over because we don't want it like tight enough that it won't move but we don't want it to be like totally floppy either if that makes sense and then I'm gonna just attach this piece across to bridge it okay and obviously you don't want to get like crazy with the glue here because you don't want it to like run out somewhere that you don't want it okay all right so then I'll let that sit for a second. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take all my little 5 by 7 pieces and we're going to glue them on. Okay. And we're going to glue these. Oh. Well, 
like so. Fold the first one, fold it all the way over. And my second one, same thing, maybe. <laughs> yeah, don't get impatient like me and let the glue actually set for a second. Okay. we're going the right direction because that would be bad. <laughs> be typical for me, but it would be bad. Okay. Oops. Okay. And then for this last one, it actually is going to cover that entire 5 by 7 piece. Which I know is kind of counterintuitive, but it just helps to reinforce. Okay. So... We're flapping the way we want to. So I'm going to slide that all the way up to where this will stop. I'm going to apparently glue my other piece to the bottom like I just told you not to do. I'm going to slide this down. And underneath there. Get it lined up where it needs to be. We're going to go ahead and glue this to that. You don't want to glue this to that base page. You just want this bottom flap, this last flap, glued to that mechanism so that when you pull, it's going to slide. Okay? So that is all ready. I'm going to grab our pocket piece now, and I'm going to miter. So at the top, and then through the bottom where the score lines intersect. is going to go on our main flap that goes up, but I'm going to go ahead and put this down on here first. So I've just got my tabs for the pocket folded in and sitting flat on my work surface. And then I'm going to come in with my base piece and then Glue that on top of that big pocket. Okay. All right. So I can move that to the side for a minute. And then we'll go back to our other. Okay, top flap. We're going to go ahead and miter. And I'm going to fold and burnish. book. I'm going to flip it around the other direction. Okay. Make sure it fits the way it's supposed to because that would be about my luck at this point. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and 
center that up, put that down all the way to the top, and then we can come back and fold its gusset. We're going to put our bottom flap on, same thing. We're going to miter. Again, all the way to the bottom, but making sure you're lined up side to side with the flap up top so that it sits like so. And somehow, I don't know where the same side Okay, somehow I thought I had that screwed up too. All right, big flap. I'm gonna go ahead and miter. Miter. I'm gonna fold the second score line in on this one. Set that down. I'm going to get my pockets that are going to go on top of that. I'm going to miter them. Okay. And I am going to fold and burnish. Fold and burnish. Burnish. I'm going to put, I'm going to do the same thing with this one that I did with the ones on that other flap on the other side. I am going to just attach the bottom here. And I think I do want the same matting all the way up. So I'm going to hold on to these two for now. I'm going to set those aside. And after I mat this, then I'll put those other two pockets down. Now I can go ahead, fold and burnish my bottom flat tab. And put this in. And it's gonna go, you're just gonna center it up. It's gonna have about an eighth of an inch top and bottom. Go all the way to that outside edge. Okay. Honestly, you know what? No, I am going to go ahead and put those down because they're sized where they run edge to edge and there's no point in wasting the matting behind them. is going to go, oh that's why I didn't need to bat it, okay, because yeah, they go, it's going to go even with the pocket below it, that's why, and I did just totally pull that up and I didn't mean to, okay, that's how I did that, it's been like a month, what can I say? Okay. Okay. And the third one. Okay, so for our flap with the accordion pocket, the base flap is going to be eight and a half by nine. 
with the nine inch at the top of the scoreboard. We're apparently going to lose our styling stylus thing. Um, okay, I have no idea what I just did with that. That's crazy. Okay. <laughs> Uh, nine inch at the top, you're going to score at half an inch and at one inch. And I did score this one just to make sure I didn't forget between when I recut this and when I actually scored it. There's going to be a flap on the top of the pocket that is four and three quarters by eight and a half. You're going to score that one at half an inch and at three quarters of an inch. And then we've got our accordion pocket. So the accordion pocket is 11 and a half by six and a half. We're going to start with the 11 and a half and you're going to score this at half an inch, one inch, and one and a half. I'm going to turn it and I'm going to go half an inch, one inch, one and a half, turn it one more time. And again, half an inch, one inch, one and a half. Okay. Get this out of the way. We are going to do our pocket first. So I am going to cut just to at the outside edge of that score line all the way across. I'm going to do the same thing down here. We're going to cut that whole square completely out. Okay. We're going to miter across the top. But we're not going to be like really aggressive about it. So just very slightly. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish. as well. Okay. I'm going to grab, oh, no, I have to. Okay. So we're going to glue this really quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this bottom part. So these two, I'm going to push that flat and I'm going to put a little dot of glue on each corner. I am going to fold the same two pieces. So that needs mitered just a tiny bit. Down on top. And then I'm going to add another dot and go from the bottom and from the side and flip it. Okay. On this side we're going to do the same thing. Oh, that was good. And then up and then over. Oops. And clip that. And we're going to let that sit for just a second and dry. In the meantime we're going to miter our tabs on our flap and our envelope flap and then the actual page. Okay. So this is going to sit sideways on here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead on this one. I'm going to fold just that first tab over. And I am going to glue this down. 
on the back side. And I'm going to glue that right up near that second score line. Okay. Once that's down, then we can go ahead and push back to get our gusset. Okay. And I'll go ahead and do the ones actually on the page itself while we're here. Okay, this should be dry enough. So we're going to go ahead and just get glue on all of these tabs. And go ahead and line this up bottom and put that down. You're going to want to burnish this a little more than you might normally. And then we're going to grab the book, which as you can see already has everything in it because I actually had this one completely screwed up. It was too long. It was turned wrong and I didn't realize it at the time so I redid it okay so then we're gonna go ahead and glue this in so that the flap opens to the right and we're just gonna center it and put that down over there okay all right so there's that this all folds up like so and then you can go ahead and add any closures before you mat and that's it so you come like this and there you go okay so now we're gonna turn this around we're gonna make sure we're putting our pocket so the opening is towards us We're going to go at the bottom of this flap, maybe just a hair up, I'm up maybe an eighth of an inch from the bottom. I'm going the bottom of that pocket down, and then I'll come in and get my sides. Okay. All right, so that will sit there like so, and there you go. There is your folio. All right, as always, thank you for watching. Um, like I said, this one's going to be kind of the anomaly because I will be doing the walkthrough on this without any pattern paper on here because I'm not honestly sure which one I'm using yet. Um, the one I want to use is mostly sold out right now so um, I thought I would try something a little bit different and you know post something that did not have the paper where you could kind of you know get a better look at the, the mechanisms and you know the overall feel of it without the paper so um, as always thank you for watching I appreciate you guys and um, you can find me on Facebook at Scrapping Under the Influence, Instagram, Scrapping Under the Influence, and of course, if you're here, you're on YouTube. Um, and then I have a group on Facebook called Scrap Happy Peeps that you can share any of my projects that you make or anything else that you've made, regardless of if you followed a tutorial, if it's something you've come up with on your own, it doesn't have to be paper, anything that you make that you want to share, by all means, go in there and drop us some pictures. We'd love to see it. Um, thank you again, guys. Bye.